given this was the last session of it, I think uh, we, we three organizers wanted to just wrap up with a, a few final remarks. So there's the prize giving to come in a little bit, stick around for that. If you'll indulge me just with a couple of remarks of my own. I mean, this, thinking back, this is a kind of unusual meeting in a couple of ways. The first is that, of course, CCP4's core business is crystallography, but we seem to spend so much time talking about everything but crystallography. But the whole point of that, and I think what the, the speakers got across really well, is that in order to get the deepest biological insights into the proteins and the systems that we're interested in, we often need to add information from other sources to the crystal structures. It doesn't make the crystal structures any less valuable, it just means that we can get synergistic information from elsewhere, allows us to look at proteins which don't crystallize, like the intrinsically disordered ones we saw quite a bit, or look at proteins in a more natural environment, because of course the crystal is not where most proteins live, so we're more interested in what they look like in solution, in a membrane, and in, in a live cell, as we just saw. And, and finally, some of the methods obviously shed light on aspects of protein function, which most obviously dynamics, which are not really evident or only yet indirectly apparent in, in a crystal structure. So again, I think we're all very grateful to the speakers for demonstrating these synergies between crystallography and all of these neighboring biophysical and computational methods. It's really been fascinating. The second way in which it's been unusual, of course, is this is the first CCP4 meeting online like this. Now, I'd like to say up front that we'll be sending a, a survey out to all participants to see what you think went well, what you think we might do better if we choose or have to do it in the same way another time. But I think it's worth just spending a moment to think of the positives of this kind of arrangement. So um, we can obviously reach out to many more people. I mean, I was just looking at the, the Mojo system and I can see there's over 500 PhD students registered for this conference. This is fantastic to think that we might be sort of broadening their horizons a little bit, making them a bit more confident to reach out to colleagues working in neighboring areas, um, you know, affecting the, the, the vision of this next generation. So I think that's terrific. And also geographical reach, that's another big advantage. I was amazed to see we have registration from more than 50 different countries, from Algeria to Zambia. So it, it really is very pleasing to think of our word spreading out to all of these different generations, all of these different countries. So, um, you know, greetings to all of you and thanks for your, your participation and hope you've all enjoyed it. Um, and I'll now pass over to Atlanta, I think has got some more thank yous to uh, lined up. Yes, thank you, Dan. Um, so, um, yes, the, this has been quite a, a historic meeting and, and very different um, to some of the meetings that we had in the past. And um, I would just like to, to thank um, both um, you and, and Tassos for being a great team in helping to put this meeting together. Um, and of course, it wouldn't have happened without all of the, um, the wonderful um, speakers that contributed to this meeting and made it so interesting and so exciting. And also our chairs who kept everybody um, running on time and helped to make all of the sessions, um, just uh, bringing that little bit more energy to it and to the, the questions and answers. Um, but of course, we could not have um, really managed to do this online without some really key technical support. And so I'd like to say a really big thank you to um, Stuart Ayres and his team. So um, Laura Bennett, who's been helping us in the background to, to keep running, Abigail O'Driscoll and Andy Collins, who've all made that possible. And of course, also um, Karen McIntyre and her admin team at um, STFC, who've, who've really done a huge amount of work just to get us up and running and to, to make this a great online experience. Um, we were helped a lot also um, by Hi. Ivo, who... Um, uh, managed to prod us at appropriate moments to get on with things and to make good decisions. Um, and we also had a lot of input from the working group two team um, or uh, community to really make sure that we had a, a diverse set of speakers and, and to really um, cover a lot of ground that we couldn't have done on our own. Um, and then we've also tried to enhance the meeting as much as possible with um, trying to keep up things that we would normally have in person, like the lunchtime bites and what's new in CCP4. Um, and that was largely organized by um, Billy Uski with help from Charles Ballard and, and Roman Keegan. 
And I hope um, many of you had the chance to really participate in those events um, and um, didn't miss too much the fact that you couldn't wander into a physical room to do that. Um, and then we've also had um, a lot of pleasure in trying to organize the social program for the meeting, um, which many of you have participated in. And this is a, a huge challenge for an, an online meeting, but we hope that um, at least some of you got some, some um, positive interactions from that and um, I managed to meet some new people so that was that was a real pleasure. Um, so in particular um, Kevin Cowton has um, organized the online gaming and there's some more of that to come this evening if you haven't had quite enough of your CC people meeting yet. Um, Stuart McNicholas put together the pub quiz um, and uh, Tassos gathered together the truthful liars or the lying truthful people I don't really know how to call us um, and then uh, I really enjoyed um, our Crafty Crystallographers meeting yesterday that was co-hosted by Eleanor Dodson and um, Eleanor van Kassenmeer. So we really appreciate all of the effort that everybody has put into making this meeting happen. It's been a real pleasure and so we would like to say a big thank you to everybody. And now I think I need to hand over to um, Tassos who has some other equally important announcements to make. Sorry, I was muted. Here we go. So it's the results of the pub quiz, of course. Um, and once more, it has been organized by Stuart McNicholas and also with uh, Nick Pierce and presented also with uh, Diana Monteiro. So we thank them for giving a really exciting evening. It was very well attended. I will not tell you the numbers. I will only tell you that uh, I was, um, well, you know, towards the end of the score of the pub quiz. But you are not interested on that, you are interested on the winner. So the third prize goes to the mysterious will be. So who, if he would like to receive a prize, because there is a prize, he could type in the chat his name, which should be will and have a B, ideally, I guess a few people can claim that. The second prize will be claimed by no other than Arwen Pearson or Arwenness, according to the name. So I figured out that uh, that must be Arwen. And the first prize, which was, um, I should say, a landslide victory, was by Colin Palmer. So uh, congratulations to all of them and uh, for a really very lively pub quiz and I'll be saying forever that uh, the one and only time that participated, I participated in the pub quiz, it was not in a pub. So the second uh, game was the two truths and one lie. Uh, eight of the speakers have been asked to make three statements and defend them live. They all did an excellent job defending them as truths. Although one was a lie, we defended all three of them as truths. And besides being a game, you could learn a few things about the speakers. So, uh, Captain Obvious is considered Robbie Austin, who was literally unable to lie, which I have to say, it's a basis for an excellent relationship for 10 years to have you in the department. So, um, I'm not implying anything here, but Atlanta <laughs> was... Uh, pretty good in manipulating people, pretending that she uh, has not been in Ireland, although she's an Irish citizen. Uh, but, uh, you know, statistically 33%, that's pretty random, I have to say. So you're not such a good liar, Atlanta. Uh, so we had a lot of fun with that, but again, it's the winners. So Joanna Pereira got eight out of eight right, but she was also one of the speakers that had their, uh, knew that she was lying. Uh, so that means seven. So um, I'm sorry, that's revoked, that was revoked the prize. The second winner was Randy Reed, who got seven out of eight, but he was not present. So uh, democratically always, I decided to revoke it. And then there were three people that got six answers right. So that's Claire Stevenson, Paul Bond, and Mateusz Olek. 
so I would uh, welcome all the people that have seen their name on these slides, uh, except the speakers, of course, but also the people that organize the pub quiz and the winners to get in contact with us. We're trying to organize some kind of a real prize that you might receive something. Uh, and we promise that we will use our influence on Charles Ballard to at least convince him to buy you a beer in the next CCP4 meeting and not send you the beer at home because we hope to see you all alive as uh, it's uh, traditional, let's say. Uh, this said, the online format had its own advantages. I hope you enjoyed it. I would like to thank you once more. Uh, Thank really, it was great to work together with Atlanta and Dan and uh, Ivo as well, who steered us all very well together and the working group too. So thanks to everybody, all the speakers, all the chairs and the organizers. And I will clap uh, at least uh, myself, lonely. So I hope uh, you will listen to a bigger upload live next year. Uh, I wish you all a great year, a healthy year, and uh, as much normality to our lives as possible soon. Uh, great to see you all. Goodbye from me.